All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. And today is the finale and the review of all of the carbon fiber filaments from the carbon fiber printing filament printing series. And today we'll review all of the drone frames that I have printed out so far. But before we get into those frames, we'll take a look at the AMS, the tube that I used um, in that one slot. We'll take a look at a couple of other tubes to see if there's any noticeable difference or any um, unnecessary wear and tear from the ones that were um, compatible with the AMS. So before you guys have to go and try all of that, I tried it for everybody. So we'll see what the results were. After that, we'll take a look at each of the drone frames and I have three super duper scientific tests that we'll do on those. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not a scientist. This isn't gonna be very uh, scientific. We'll do the best that we can and we'll see what happens. But the first thing that we'll look at is the quality of the, of the print. So we'll see what uh, the print quality is, if there was any errors in the print, if the drone frame is straight or if it's bent or whatever it happens to be, we'll take a look at that and um, give a, a determination on each of the frames as to what that looks like. The second thing that we'll look at is again, super duper scientific, but we'll do a little bit of a twist test and we'll see what the rigidity of the frames uh, are. I'm under the impression that the more rigid the frame is, the better off it's gonna be so that the flight controller doesn't have to deal with so many vibrations. Um, so if I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments. And then the last thing that we'll take a look at is what the slicer said, uh, the weight of it would be and what the actual weight of it will be. So we'll go ahead and weigh each of the frames and see what they weigh um, like. And then after that, I'll post and let you know where you can go to vote on which frame you think should be the one that I build a drone out of. And then we'll go ahead and do that. So if all that sounds good, sit back and relax. I'll get everything ready. All right, so let's get the tube out of the last slot here in the AMS. And there we go. Now I'll take out another one of these tubes right here. Let's take a look at the difference. All right, so looking at the two tubes next to each other, I don't see any wear or tear. This is the one that we were using in the AMS. This is not. So after a couple of runs, I am not seeing any of the differences in the tubes. Not a super scientific test. If we ran hundreds through here, I'm sure that we would see a difference. But if you just need to run a couple of prints through here like I did, I'm not seeing any damage to the tubes there. So I hope that helps. All right, so let's get into the print quality. And the first one that we'll take a look at is the PETG. And if you remember from the video, this is the one that was very shiny and it is very shiny. Overall print quality is pretty good. There are a couple of gaps in there, but not bad. We may be able to ch change that with some slicer settings or with printing with the 0.4, but these are the settings that the RFID put into the slicer. So I didn't change any of that. So overall print quality is pretty good. Don't see many errors. So let's take a look at the PLA. But we before we do PLA, I forgot about the camera mount. And I don't know how well you can see it, but it is a little bit of a print error. There is a little bit of a ball on the end of that. I think we can. All right, so now let's take a look at the PLA. And again, this one printed out pretty good. 
but we do see some of those gaps in the printing. And again, this is the, you know, pre-made slice, you know, pre-made settings for the slicer that came from, you know, running the RFID through the AMS that usually puts that in there. We do see a couple of gaps. Again, we could probably take that out in the slicer settings or by using the 0.4. But overall, little tiny error there. I don't know how well you can see that. But overall, the print quality is pretty good. You see the gaps on there. Except for the gaps, but you don't really feel, I don't really feel the gaps, but um, you definitely can see them. So let's move over to the PAHT. So when this one first printed, man, the print quality looked really good and it still does look pretty good. But after sitting for a couple of days, one thing that I noticed is the frame is not flat. And not all of them are, are super flat, but man, this one is real bad. Right. I mean, it's just really, really bad. So the PAHT, that one didn't have any, uh, as many gaps or anything like that. But I will say after sitting for a little while, it did warp. I don't know if there's something that I did there. But even this is a little bit warped too. So I did like the way that that looked at first. And you do see here that there's really no gaps in the in the print or anything. So the print quality there looked really good. But it didn't print um, very flat. Alright, so last and not least, let's go to the PET. Alright, so here's the PET. And as we can see, pretty flat. This one too didn't have the gaps on the bottom. Real nice and I, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but it is like soft smooth. Um, it's so smooth on the bottom, even here where the holes are and where the gaps are. Um, you know, feeling the filament prior to printing, it was super rough and way rougher than the rest of them. But man, after it prints, it comes out pretty soft. Um, and it is flat. Print quality and the details in here are really good. No errors. Same thing there. We don't see any gaps or anything like that. So as far as print quality, um, and you guys be the judge of it. You guys are going to be the judge of the one of the drone that gets printed. But for me, uh, the PET is the front runner for me for for print quality. Um. So let's get into the second test between all of them. All right, so for the rigidity test, we'll just take each of the drones here and I'll just try to bend it on the arms and we'll see how rigid it is. And I'll kind of do the best I can to communicate to you what it feels like. Uh, and this is the PETG CF here. And this is fairly rigid. Uh, minor gapping in there on the print quality again, but as far as rigidity, this is fairly rigid. Uh, not so much in this, this thing, but I don't know how much that matters on the prop guard, how rigid or not that is. That might actually be uh, decent for whenever it hits stuff, uh, so it can take some impact. But it is fairly rigid. So that's the PET G, and here's the PLA. And this one is noticeably stiffer than the PETG. Noticeably stiffer. Again, this one has the gaps and everything, but noticeably stiffer, at least in the frame. Like it is very, very stiff there. Uh, the prop guard is still um, flimsy, but not as bad as you can see on that corner push right there. But I will say the rigidity here is noticeably different. I don't know, as you can see, the deflection there versus the deflection there. Noticeably different on the PLA. All right, and now for the PAHTCF. 
So this is not as rigid as the PLA. And again, this is the one that's very warped on one side right there. That could be just a printing error, but I don't know. All the rest of them printed out just fine. Um, but it does have a smooth surface on the bottom. It is not as rigid as the PLA. So as far as rigidity is concerned, the PLA is winning so far for me. All right, now for the PET. Ah, so very, very rigid like the PLA. Yes, this is just as rigid as the PLA. Yeah, just as rigid, if not more, as the PLA. Yeah, so it is in there with the rigidity there. It is noticeably different from the PETG. Noticeably different in how rigid this is. Uh, so for me, PET is winning this one again. And followed closely by the PLA is very, very uh, stiff as well. All right, so we're just going to weigh each of these little frames instead of all those little pieces and all of that. I don't know how accurate my scale is <clears throat> for all of those. So we'll just do these little frames right here. So for the PETG, looks like we have nine grams. For the PLA, nine grams. For the PAHTCF, eight grams and that was the one in the slicer that showed the lightest weight as well i think this is the one that was the heaviest in the slicer and we're hovering between nine and ten on here so nine and a half ten on there so the pet is the one that weighs the most the rest of them weigh right around eight grams eight seven eight nine grams so there you go. All right, so that concludes our carbon fiber filament printing series. And I hope you enjoyed it, watching it as much as I enjoyed printing all of that. I had a lot of fun doing it and I look forward to printing a drone in the future. So with that, you can go to my community page and go to the recent, most recent post that I made where I put out a survey where you can vote on which filament you want me to make a drone out of. So when we get enough votes, I'll go ahead and print a frame out of it, make a quick video, and show you guys the results. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and with that, have a great week. Mm -hmm.